Good morning, and welcome to Christ Church. Our service this morning is the Liturgy of the Word from the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, and we begin on page 355 in the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. This is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, for I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the people. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you're able, and we'll uh, read together Psalm 138, found on page 793 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 793. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. 
All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. This is a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We open the hearts of your church. Amen. 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 It's good to have you back, Father Jim. Thank you. It's good to be back. I have missed our little confabs. <laughs> As have I. But my mind and heart have been in another place. Well, and, and, and ours uh, with you as well. And, and the, this morning's gospel is a uh, often, I think, focused on Peter 
it's the confession of Peter and it's uh, it's the uh, verse most often cited in uh, support of the papacy and, and the the centrality of the see of Rome but uh, yeah I don't know about you but when I was growing up I was taught that you're not supposed to talk about religion or politics in polite society and uh, is that is that part of your upbringing you know in my upbringing and a fundamentalist background um, we talked about religion a lot and my recollection was of my uh, father and his ten brothers and sisters uh, to discuss religion openly and to disagree vehemently so perhaps that's why it was polite society <laughs> that we didn't discuss it okay? that is indeed the point <laughs> But uh, the, the example of the gospel is very much not to exclude the discussions of religion and politics, nor to separate religion and politics. We, uh, it, today's uh, setting is a town that was then called Caesarea Philippi. And I'm, I'm going to uh, assert a moment of personal privilege and say that Roseanne and I have been to Caesarea Philippi. Uh, it was in ancient times called Panis and is now called Banas, uh, corruption in the same, but it is the headwater spring of the Jordan River. Uh -huh. And it is no small hike from Galilee to the, the springs at Panis. The, the river goes quite a way from uh, Jesus' usual haunts at Capernaum and, and Nazareth. And so he hauled the disciples you know, a, a significant fraction of the entire way to Damascus and to the foot of Mount Hermon where the spring rises out of the, the rock fed by the winter snows in the mountain in order to have this conversation. And the, the setting is, I think, part of the gospel and part that we don't, don't always get because, uh, of course, there are more than one Caesarea, but all the Caesareas had one thing in common, and that was they were named in honor of Caesar. Caesar, yes. And uh, the Philippi in this one uh, is uh, Philip II, who was the son of Herod the Great. Uh, Herod had a lot of sons, and not, yeah. not all of whom lived. Uh, but, uh, and one of them will be the Herod Antipas that uh, is part of the Passion narrative. But this was another son of Herod and named Philip, and Philip ruled this northern uh, territory as a tetrarch under the Roman authorities. And he had, he had rededicated this ancient shrine that had been dedicated to the god Pan and dedicated it to the god Caesar. And we, we don't always remember that when... Caesar Augustus, who was uh, the, the adopted son of Julius Caesar, got into power, he, by act of the Roman Senate, made Julius a god. Mm -hmm. And if you make your daddy a god, guess what you get to make yourself? The son of God. The son of God. Holy Isn't that cow. Amazing? You know, and you thought you got your daddy something nice for Father's Day. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That, that, that bottle of high karate and that ugly tie does not cut it. <laughs> no. No, no comparison. <laughs> and so when Jesus arrives here at this hole in the rock uh, that is the wellspring of the River Jordan, which forms the lifeblood of that country, and was dedicated to the ancient Greek god Pan, and then rededicated to the modern Roman god Caesar by the then still ruling Tetrarch Philip, that stage set for the confession of Peter is a direct confrontation, a bite your thumb kind of gesture to the Roman authority. Because when Peter says, you are the son of God in this place, he is taking Caesar's title and giving it to Jesus. And the, the Christ, the anointed, is also one of Caesar's titles. 
and you know if the uh, we close on the line don't tell anybody well that's a really good idea because the secret police would have been very happy to just come in in the night and cut somebody's head off for saying that and so we we have Jesus not the good shepherd Jesus not the great physician Jesus not the wise teacher we have Jesus the liberator we have the same word of God that was spoken to Pharaoh that caused all sorts of tremendous uproar in Egypt being spoken now to Caesar Indeed. and uh, Caesar if he knew about it was shaken to his core because this is this is the way your rule ends is when you find yourself on the wrong side of the fight with God the Almighty Indeed. Mm -hmm. and so when we now face a, a fraught political environment I encourage you to put away the part of your upbringing that may have said don't talk about religion and politics instead I encourage you to put forward the same spirit that Peter models and Jesus taught which is to say that all politics must serve our faith every decision must be made in light of our faith and every vote cast in accordance with our faith and to, to do otherwise is to deny the Christ and to deny the saving work that he has done in our lives. And if it is bold enough to rub in Caesar's face, then we should have no problems at all standing tall and proud and saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Jesus was indeed in the world, but not of the world. Um, but he didn't leave any room in the world for other people to claim those titles. <laughs> Indeed. So, you know, uh, and, and that, I think, really uh, is an important thing now because we still have deification going on. There are plenty of people who would like, whether they're celebrities or uh, political figures or, uh, you know, people who desire to gather as a, uh, groups around them as a guru. There are plenty of people who would contend with God for the love of the people and the worship of the people. And uh, we have to mark it, and rebuke it, and, and be strong in our faith. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 358 and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today, as we pray for the church and the world, I invite your special prayers for all of those in Hispanola, that's the, the island that holds the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and for Cuba, and for Florida, and then for Louisiana, and Texas, and Mississippi, and Alabama, all of whom are facing a double-barreled hurricane. Uh, this is not something that I have ever seen, and going by the, the faces of the people on the Weather Channel, this is not something anybody has ever seen, where we have two hurricanes following 24 hours in each other's train headed at the same piece of coast. Uh, as of this morning's alert, we are out of the cone of uncertainty, but it was not 24 hours ago. We were smack dab in the middle of it, and things do change again. So whether we are praying for ourselves and our nearby neighbors, or praying for our brothers and sisters miles across the sea or miles along the coast, it is important that we pray, and we pray continually for the, those who are suffering fear. Remember that fear is a disease. Fear is a cancer on faith. And those who allow fear to grip them quite quickly turn to anger. We have only the great toilet paper crisis of a few months ago to remind us that something that is both false and foolish can nevertheless result in terrible consequences. And so in this time where people are facing a true risk, we want to lift them up so that they face it with faith, with calm hearts, with clear eyes, with uh, vital hands working to prepare, but without fear, and most especially without anger and without turning on one another in this time when we should all be brought closer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you this day your faithful servant, Linda. And we pray and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. The service continues on page 360. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Greet one another in the name of Christ our Lord. God's peace. God's right peace. Right. Thank you. We've been tested. In several senses of that word. <laughs> yes. And so far, so we're far. okay. That, that's right. That's right. We can keep breathing. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may that peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Mass has ended. Go to work. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.